So in the first lesson, in, in the A lesson for 8.14, um, we covered when you're given a power series, how you write it as a rational function. Um, for this next lesson, we're going to be looking at it the other way around. What happens if you're given a rational function and they ask you to write the power series for it? Um, I'm going to start by looking at some easy examples, the ones that I feel are sort of already set up properly for you. So for instance, um, what if I asked you to write power series for the following, right? Um, so first, suppose I give you 3 over 1 minus x plus 4, right? The reason I consider this one to be easy is that it's totally in the right form already. Like this, I mean, looks like it came from somebody saying a1 over 1 minus r. You can tell really clearly that the first term is totally 3, the common ratio was x plus 4, and therefore this thing is the sum of the infinite series that starts with 3 and has a common ratio of x plus 4. So that means your first term is 3, then you multiply by x plus 4, that's 3 times x plus 4. Then you multiply by x plus 4 again, so that would be 3 times x plus 4 squared. And, and you can see where this is going. The idea is if this is the first term and this is the common ratio, you're just multiplying by that x plus 4 each time, and it gives us that that, that rational function is this power series. Again, only on the interval of convergence, and to save time right now, I'm not going to go into that. Like, I assume that you guys could find out what the interval of convergence is for this and work with that. Um, so that was my first easy example. Um, let's, let's do another easy example. Um, so again, I, I want us to write a power series for, so write a power series for wow. Seems good. Um, we're at a power series for, for this one. Um, what if I had 5 over 1 plus 2 times x minus 3? Now the question is, do you see this clearly as something over 1 minus a common ratio? The one complaint might be that the plus is a minus, but hopefully you just recognize, oh, that just means the common ratio is negative. If the common ratio is negative, those two negatives would combine to give you a positive. So hopefully you recognize this means the first term must have been 5, the common ratio must have been negative 2x minus 3. And so because of that, we know that this thing, 5 over 1 minus 2 times x minus 3, 3, is an infinite geometric series, first term of 5. And for every subsequent term, we just multiply by this common ratio. So the next one is minus 10x minus 3. The next would be plus 20x minus 3 squared. The next would be minus 40x minus 3 cubed, and so on. Um, and so the idea is when they're already more or less in this form, it's really easy to pick out these two things and work with them. Um, in practice, sometimes you'll get easy ones, and sometimes you'll get ones that are going to be slightly more difficult. Um, so as a way of showing that, I'm, I'm going to sort of expand expand on the problem a little bit. Um, and I'm actually going to change our instructions slightly. So let me write, write the new instructions here. So for these problems, I'm going to give you not only a rational expression, but I'm also going to give you what I want the center of your power series to be, right? Um, so as my first example, and, and the next uh, like three examples are all going to be this style of problem, right? So the first one I'm going to give you is 4 over 1 plus x, and I want it to be centered at 0, right? Now, the way that I think about these problems, the way I, and this is actually an easy problem, and you'll see it shortly. The way I see it is the fact that it's centered at 0 means that your common ratio has to be somehow related to x minus 0, Okay, so so whatever. My common ratio basically has to be related to x, right? Well, fortunately, this thing already has x here. It already has an x in the position that the common ratio is supposed to be, right? So because of that, this is already basically set up properly. I've got x here. I've got 1 here. This is proper. I can tell from this thing right here that the first term is 4, and that the common ratio is negative x, negative because 
there's a, a plus here instead of a minus, right? So because of that, I conclude that 4 over 1 plus x is equal to 4 minus 4x plus 4x squared minus 4x to the third, and so on. Now again, this is only true on the interval of convergence, but fair enough, they are equal to one another on the interval of convergence. Now, and I hope I can fit this on the screen, I, I want to slightly modify the problem. What if instead I asked for a power series for 4 over 1 plus x, but not centered at 0 anymore, centered at 1, right? This is now more complicated, right? We set up above that because I was centered at 0 before, my common ratio needed to be related to x. Now that I'm centered at 1, what does my common ratio need to be related to? Well, because it's centered at 1, I'm going to be expecting to see x minus 1 show up all over the place in the problem, right? So in order to get that to happen, here's, and this is going to be weird, so pay close attention. You may need to watch this more than once. I need this x to actually be x minus 1. So I'm basically going to use the dark magic method here. I'm going to say, okay, 4 over 1 plus x. Now, I'd really like it to be x minus 1, so I'm going to go minus 1 plus 1. Doing that enables me to, to basically put in the x minus 1 that I need without actually imbalancing the original problem, right? So now, I want to keep the x minus 1. The plus 1, I'm going to combine that with this 1 over here. That'll give me 4 over 2 plus x minus 1. And I could even put that in parentheses. And, and we're sort of getting to see like, hey, all right, I'm, I'm seeing this come together. Um, now, the only catch is that in order to use that little formula, that, that, oops, sorry, the infinite sum formula is supposed to be first term over, over 1 minus r. So not only do I need the common ratio to be here, but I need 1 to be there. So this is a 2. I need to make that a 1 somehow. How can I make that a 1? Well, my thought is if I multiply top and bottom of this rational expression by 1 half and like, you know, distribute that through, I can end up with 2 in the numerator over 1 plus a half x minus 1, right? And at this point, like, I don't know if you guys see it, this is really kind of magical. This is the first term. This is your 1, because it's supposed to be 1, and this is your common ratio. At this point, we can see the first term is 2, and we can see that the common ratio is negative 1 half x minus 1 right? Um, so the final step in this process is that I say, okay, 4 over 1 plus x is apparently equal to, the first term is 2. Now each time I'm supposed to be multiplying by this common ratio, so I multiply by negative to half and by x minus 1. So I'm going to get minus 1 x minus 1 plus a half x minus 1 squared minus a fourth x minus 1 cubed, and so on. I'm hoping my video will let me scroll back this far, but I'd, I'd sort of like to show you guys something strange. Um, I'm telling you that 4 over x plus 1 is equal to this power series, but just a minute ago, I said it was equal to this power series. And you'll notice they're like completely different. This one has 4s everywhere and has only x raised to a power. This one down here, on the other hand, has different coefficients. It's 2, then 1, then a half, then 1 fourth. It's alternating. Um, there's x minus 1s everywhere. How in the world can this thing be equal to two different things? And the key idea is, remember, these only work on the interval of convergence, right? So we would need to figure out what the interval of convergence of this is to be able to say, that, you know, the interval of values for which this actually works and actually applies. Um, I did want to go through one more example of this, and I'll warn you now, it is a more difficult example. Um, so if you need to like pause and take a minute to breathe, please do so. In fact, I'm going to get up and get some water right now. So I'll be back in just a minute. I'm back. Um, and I need to put Enoch to sleep soon. So I'm going to go through this example pretty quickly. Um, the rational expression that we have this time is the expression 3 over 4 plus 2x 
and I want it to be centered at negative 2. Right? Um, and this one is wacky for a couple of reasons. Um, I mean, for one, that's not a 1. For two, there's already a 2 that's here messing stuff up. I want something different here, so we sort of start from the beginning, right? We said that the first step was, based on the center, what do you want your common ratio to look like? Well, because I'm centered at negative 2, I want my common ratio to look like x plus 2, right? Now, as far as I'm concerned, that 2 is standing in the way of me making this thing look like x plus 2. So my first step is let's make that look like x. In other words, let's take the top and the bottom and divide them both by 2. So that'll give me 3 halves over 2 plus x. So I'm, I'm sort of one step closer. My first step was, was turning this thing into an x, basically so that I can turn the x into an x plus 2, right? I just realize that there's something wrong with this problem. I'm going to need to to change this. Um, let's say instead that we want to be centered at negative 3. And it sounds like Izzy's crying, and that looks terrible. So I'm going to pause this, and we're going to try this again in a minute. I'm ready to try again. Um, let's, let's stick with the same thing. Let's stick with the function. So this is new problem. Sorry. Um, let, let's work with 3 over 4 plus 2x but let's have it centered at negative 3 instead, right? Sorry about that. Not, not, not your fault. I, I won't, I will, I'll be sure not to mess problems up like that in the future. Um, so I've got this thing. Um, what do we want our common ratio to look like? Common ratio needs to appear like x plus 3, right? Um, so because of that, I want this first thing to be x plus 3. So again, I'll divide everything by 2. This is still going to be 3 halves, 2 plus x, right? Then here's that really, really sneaky step. I wanted to have x plus 3, so I want to have an x plus 3 here. I'm going to do that by putting plus 3 minus 3 down there, right? Um, now that I've done that, I can sort of simplify the bottom. Keeping in mind, I, I really want to keep this x plus 3 together. I can put these pieces together separately, right? This will give me 3 halves on the top over negative 1 plus x plus 3. Um, I just got a 5% battery warning on my iPad, so I need to move quick. Um, the next step is this thing really needs to be a positive 1. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom of this expression by negative 1. Right? Doing that is going to give me negative 3 halves on the top. On the bottom, I'm going to have 1 minus x plus 3. And at this point, I'm in the proper form. This thing tells me that the first term is negative 3 halves. Tells me the common ratio is x plus 3. Tells me it's not alternating because there's a negative here. And so that means my expression, which I think was originally 3 over 4 plus 2x, is equal to negative 3 halves minus 3 halves times x plus 3 minus 3 halves times x plus 3 squared, and so on. Again, only on the interval of convergence, but there's your power series. Um, I think I'm going to have one more video tonight for you guys about one more cool thing we can do, but this one's done. So I'll see you in the next one.